The Mandela effect be fucking me up. Thought that shit was like this, but it's not. What the fuck? Like, is we going through portals or something? People keep steady telling me it's nothing. Jesus, didn't they have a Z in it? Didn't Flintstones have two T's in it? Double stuff Oreos had two F9 as one. What the hell? I am tired of this mess. Looney Tunes used to be spelled like this. Sketches, they used to be spelled like this. Curious jokes had a tail like this. Like, who the fuck is changing the shit? Jiff, it used to be Jiffy for real. Sex in the city was sex in the city. For Breeze, I thought it had two E's. Fruit Loose, thought it was spelled like these. Monopoly Man had a monocle on. Pikachu tail didn't look like this. Kit Kat bar had a dash on it. I swear all of this shit not legit. Oscar Mir had an E, not an A. Fruit of the Loom had a basket behind it. Shaggy, he had an Adam's apple. Look at him today and I swear I can't find it. The Mandela it. effect be tricking my mind. Cause I be seeing it all the time. If you're not seeing it, nigga, you blind. I'm saying the truth, why would I be lying? If you be seeing Mandela effects, please let me know some of them in the comments. Send it to someone and show them this real. The Mandela effects can be chosen to stop them. This is so scary. I have a theory that the Mandela effect is used to see how much of history can be altered in front of our eyes. Here's a prime example of one of that. There's this woman on TikTok who was going crazy because she swore the Fruit of the Loom had a cornucopia logo. And to the point that even Fruit of the Loom themselves put a timeline of all their logos and it never had a cornucopia. And this woman went hard. Her therapist told her, yo, you need to chill out. You need to just drop this. So she went through all of her old clothing and lo and behold, she found a shirt with the Fruit of the Loom with the cornucopia logo on it that shows me like, yo, I think the Mandela effect is an operation that's running around right now to see how much of history can be altered right in front of our eyes without us noticing. And then they gaslight the public and be like, nope, this never happened. People are thinking about it very little. Hear the whole comment. My perception of it was that people took that comment as a dig yes. to Whippy. You know, you called her the help. Yes. And so. I can see how that could be a little contradictory in saying, I love my sister, she's been dope, but she's been the help for all these years. Yes. How do you, um, how do you reconcile the two? Well, I told the truth. And what happens is we're now in a society that the truth is offensive. Mm -hmm. See, I too have been the help. Mm -hmm. And the very man Whoopi Goldberg told me to get rid of, which is my husband and my manager, mm -hmm. he said, Mama, you've got to stop being the help. Because 100 years from now, when your image is on that screen, somebody else's family benefits from that, not mine. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't saying it to do a dig. I wasn't saying it to spill no tea. I'm 51 years old. I'm too damn old <laughs> to be digging and shading. And yeah. I'm just saying the truth. Mm -hmm. When I said Whoopi Goldberg was the help, let me tell you what I meant by that. Mm -hmm. When I have a woman that says to me on national TV, I could have schooled you. Well, you wanted to school me on how I was supposed to work for free. I simply don't want that type of education. Mm. That's the education you're fine with. That's not the education I want, and that's not the education I want to pass down to my little sisters saying, you just got to do it. Let me school you. If they're not paying you, baby, that's called slavery. Ricky Smiley knows this, and I don't know why he would lose a child and come on the air and start lying. That's why people believe in rituals right there. It's because, well, why would he lie? I don't know why liars lie, but I can tell you this. We auditioned in Los Angeles. Yes. I was audition number 201. 200 black comedians auditioned for the role of Money Mike with me. You're saying all 201 of us was auditioning and you had already had the role and had already shot the role in four days? The truth of the matter is, the Money Mike in the original script got raped in the bathroom. And that's what Ricky Smiley was okay with. Cat Williams had to take the risk in front of the studios and the cast and our powers that be in his very first movie and say respectfully, humbly, guys, if we're talking about anything else, I have no credibility and I have no pull. But we're talking about comedy, right. where I have all the credibility and all the pull. The problem with Friday After Next is we're trying to make a classic comedy. And this comedy involves a rape. And rape is never no, funny, no. no matter who it happens to or what the circumstances are. If you would allow me to allow us to do this movie without a black man getting raped in it, I promise you that it will be twice as funny 
as it would be with him getting raped. So. Well, I'm not saying I regret doing three strikes because it wasn't really too much in there other than my ass being in the sling in the air and a di with a diaper on. That's like you can't never take that back. But um, like I said, it's acting. I'm working. I'm getting compensated for what I do. And I'm a professional. So if it's any part, I wouldn't say movie. But a part in the movie would be lockdown where the character, my character got raped. Um, I didn't want to do that scene, but it was already written in the script. I already had the part. So the director, Mr. John Lutz and Hobbs, shout out, you know, I was like, man, I don't see the relevance of not getting the character getting raped because people get raped all the time in prison. Not today like they did back in the 80s or the 70s, but unfortunately that it happened and um not to me thank god never and um but i think the character had to get a dude fellatio head or something he, he got to act like it so that's i cried after doing that scene i hated that I, I told the director man you know i don't see the relevance of this happening Cause a, a real mother, I'd have bit the dude shit off. Excuse my language, but in reality, I'm not finna just let me put anything in my mouth. You're not getting it back. Come on, man. Who would? Who would? Who would? You gotta kill. Some, you have to murder me, man. I hated that. I would take that back. Damn, man. I hate to hear that, man. How was you feeling when you had to act that out? Well, the the, the actor. In actuality, I'm on the bed and the actor is way over here. But from the camera angle, it looked like I'm, we're right, I'm right in front of him. So all I'm doing is this, doing this. And he's making facial, uh, moans and, and all that, man. And so it was like, I never, it never, it wasn't real. It was acting, but I could see like from people watching it. It looked it re it looked real. Now y'all see how real this stuff is in Hollywood, man, and how the writers and directors will come up with the entire script, have everything set in hopes of you just going along with it. Clearly back then he was on the chase for money and a little bit of fame because he said he had to because they'd already wrote it. Cat Williams said the same thing. He said the script was already written for Money Mike to be raped. They were just hoping whoever would play the role would just go on through, go on through with it. But Cat Williams, in his way, kind of changed that narrative. So fortunately, we never got to see a rape scene in Friday at the Next, thankfully. Because just like people in the comments of that video of DeAndre Bonds, excuse me for not knowing his name earlier, they were like, yo, that scene changed my perspective on a lot of things and it also saved a lot of young kids from doing crime and wanting to go to jail you know or doing stupid stuff that takes you to jail potentially that kind of stuff can happen to people who aren't you know willing to really take up for themselves like that in jail or who don't have a crew to protect them he said it made him cry spiritually it hurt his soul it made him cry and he didn't even do anything he didn't get raped in real life he didn't give fellatio to the man in real life. And he said it made him cry. It, you know, damn near broke his spirit. So imagine what it does to actual rape victims. Imagine what putting that trauma out on the screen does to people just watching. People are like, yo, that scene is wild. Just watching it is just like crazy. You know, the energy that that gives out, that tells us a lot about Hollywood and why they choose to show us certain things. Because think about the energy you feel from seeing someone being raped in a movie. Y'all, it's not actually happening. He's not getting raped in real life. They're acting it out. Think about the energy we feel from it. This alone should tell us how powerful energy is from things that we choose to watch and consume. Music, movies, it don't matter. Look at how much it can control your mood. Look at how it, you know, seeps into your spirit. And it's not even real. Just portrayed to be real. To me, this part of the video is very important. It's 
very important because we get a really pure example of how powerful energy really is. This is why these demons in Hollywood choose to pray over it, choose to harvest as much energy as they can. This is why they cast spells and do the things that they do because they know that is how it's gonna make us feel just by watching it. Thanks to Cat Williams for letting us know that it was originally supposed to be rape. And it doesn't sound far-fetched because they've done it multiple times, DeAndre Bond's telling you. That's what they did. They'd already wrote it up. Just like, remember when Dave Chappelle told the writers and stuff that he didn't want to wear a dress? And then he was like, in 10 minutes, they came back with a whole new script. Like, here you go, Dave. All right, cool. Ah, just so frustrated. You didn't want to play. You didn't want to do the dress. They came back in 10 minutes because they didn't have to write a script. They already had it written just in case he didn't want to do it. It's a dirty game up there, y'all. It's a dirty game. And when we talk about Terry Crews, remember Terry Crews had already came out in that Me Too movement with the whole Harvey Weinstein thing. We just talked about him, remember? We just talked about him, where some Hollywood exec producer guy groped him when he was at some kind of like dinner or something and his wife was next to him and so on and so on. So that leads us into the next clip of Cat Williams on the podcast with Shannon Sharp. So with that being said, check this out. I came in this business saying I was going to expose. When I talked about Michael Jackson, when I talked about R. Kelly, they canceled me for these things because why would you talk about another black dude? Race is not where the line is drawn. It's God's side and the other side. And we don't care nothing about the other side. Period. Period. All of these uh, big, big deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. T.G. Jakes, any of them. The, uh, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. The truth is the light. These people are not powerful. Satan can't create anything. That includes blessings for his people. That's why, you know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is? What? Is to act like it didn't happen. They all do the same job. Why do you think Gary Owen can't cross over and he already white and been in comedy for 25 years? If what I say ain't the case. It's a cabal, it's a, it's a consortium. They, they rock with who they rock with and they don't with who they don't. What? All of these shortcut takers, I, I was, they canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the thing came out, but he offered to suck my penis in front of all my people at my agency. What am I supposed to do? He did all of that. I'm thinking I'm the only black person on the script. I get there, it's three other black guys on there. Woo. Huh. So you wonder what they did to get that? <laughs> I told him no. What y'all do? <laughs> <laughs> and this is why when I walk in a room, heads go down. Behind my back, I'm nothing. I'm just a regular old comedian that's bitter and jealous. But in my face, no, no, no. The king has walked in and they have to respect it only because I've not taken the shortcuts. I've not been funded. They pay you to not talk about things they don't want you to talk about. They tell you that themselves. I can't do that because I. Uh, Steve told you that he stopped doing stand up because he has seven TV shows. The only problem is when he stopped stand up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. He stopped stand up because he got in a comedy battle called the Championship of Stand Up Comedy with one Cat Williams in Detroit in front of 10,000 people and lost because Cat Williams said he was actually bald and that was a wig. And I went in and that's why he couldn't do stand up anymore. Imagine him coming to tell you another story where he got so big and it was Bernie and them's fault because they wanted to be movie stars. Now Cat Williams gave us the truth in that last clip. He said it's God's side and it's the other side and we don't care what's on the other side. We don't care about the other side at all and by that y'all know what he mean you know. You either a part of good or you a part of evil. And shoot, 
throughout Cat Williams' entire career. That's what he been exposing. Steve told you that he stopped doing stand-up because he has seven TV shows. See, the reason I stopped was because I seven shows on TV all at once. The only problem is when he stopped stand up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. He stopped stand up because he got in a comedy battle called the Championship of Stand Up Comedy with one Cat Williams in Detroit in front of 10,000 people and lost because Cat Williams said he was actually bald and that was a wig. And I went in and that's why he couldn't do stand up anymore. Imagine him coming to tell you another story where he got so big. <laughs>
like in a championship. But then, the nigga couldn't sell out the tickets necessary. This the side of the game that's never told Kodak Black was looking bad on that Drink Champs episode Nori should have never put that out He could have let him no, know him, But they was thinking getting views Not, not help the bros, bros. Cuddy claimed fame had him shoving coke up his nose He been getting high since the bait days Hustling yeah. clothes Wayne sound crazy like a frog stuck in his throat Still on the lean cup Fiend up, it fucking, fucking shows Somebody need to intervene before he up and goes And everybody wanna cry like uh, We lost a fucking goat Hip hop after 50 years, I, I mean what a joke. joke Started with a crack monkey on your back, back. Junkie mode Junk now we in the future where future got the kids turning into drug abusers Juiced up like his lit Juice World was a victim to the music that he did On the camera sniffing crushed up pills with his bitch Not an off mid interview At least he showed the dark side of the shit that he was getting into I must admit Gucci Man was my favorite addict But now he looking great after kicking the habit Rock Nation had Uzi go to rehab quick Like if you wanna be successful gotta leave that shit Nas is Hennessy's token nigga Black man lost for the money he promoting liquor Alcohol company Companies, they getting rich off rap Alcoholism, the religion of blacks We lost X with success, he still smoke crack He wasn't the only one either, let's go back Flavor, flavor, scream and fight the power Teaching us black pride, but on the low he like white powder Paul Wall told Drew Santana to sip Eminem introduced popping pills to the kids If you look at all the... And I'm saying, niggas be coming to me really like Working me talking about something Where you going, when I'm apologizing When they going to apologize to me? When they gonna apologize to us? Yeah. Facts. Aborting us, locking us up, putting drugs in front of us, locking up all our leaders and calling them gang leaders. Who else is gonna put the community together? And anybody that could put the community together, they put them under the jail. And when I talked to Trump, he ain't never, he ain't never, he ain't never get Trump. Trump could have freed Larry, bro. Fuck Trump. You know what I'm saying? So Trump, look, you want our support? You have to promise, nigga, in writing, on your life, you gonna free Larry, bro. And that's not just it. The communities, nigga, it's so many acres in America, we don't have to stay in the inner city. We don't have to stay on top of each other. They motherfucking made the Twix double the size, trying to make us fat. They doing this inclusive shit. They just made that girl Paloma the head model. They trying to push fucking uh, obesity to us. They try to, they put us in a McDonald's commercial, they put your brother in a McDonald's commercial, they try to put me in a McDonald's commercial, McDonald's kills you, my nigga! They not putting healthy shit, you can grow fucking food right off the side of the ground, my nigga! You don't gotta pay for all this shit, and fuck all this Chanel shit, shit we do to impress niggas going broke to impress other broke people, man! Yeah. Fuck the Chanel bag and any shit you care about crazy!
No, and by the way, nice. we're not black. We're bla how about that? We're not black, nigga. We're Indian. Yeah. We're Native American. Yeah. How many of y'all grandmothers got Indian in your family? Yeah. I'm I'm Wait a second, but what happened to what happened to the Indian? We black. Show me black on the planet. He's Why the you stop recording? He knows the fucking shit. Why you sound crazy? Nah, because yeah, you think I, I sound crazy. No, no, you don't sound crazy. You're talking like that. You're talking true. You're talking true. We're not black. Race was made up. You're talking true. Race was made up. Yeah, with brown eyes. Show me black. Show me black on the planet. It was here first. Show me black. Everybody else, they fucking, they, they European. They Australian. They Chinese, they Japanese. Show me black on the planet. We marginalized as entertainers. I already seen the other side, nigga. I seen the factories. I went up to head to head with these niggas, man. And I'm still alive. And I'm live for this moment to say this to y'all. As far as the Nicki Minaj shit, I don't care. Love for her husband, I met her, blah, 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 all this shit. I don't care. I made that girl rewrite her verse three times for Monster. I supported her career. You understand what I'm saying? So I don't know what it is. No, none of y'all motherfuckers here with no Instagram, nobody living, nobody at. And I don't want to hear shit from none of these nigga Jewish niggas talking about, oh, he's in an episode. Harley Pass Nick, follow me to the fucking hotel. The nigga killed kill Aaron Carter, and now they acting like they won't kill, uh, yeah. clear the Backstreet Boy sample. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Harley yeah. Pasternak pusher, yeah. your trainer. Yeah. Harley yeah. Pasternak, Jay Z. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And then niggas be hanging around these niggas just for the money or some Mike Rubin shit. I slap the shit out of Mike Rubin. I see that nigga. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, fuck, fuck these niggas, bro. Fuck these niggas, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I'm on my Farrakhan Don shit right now, bro. Because guess what? These Yeezys gonna sell. Yeah. They sabotage the show today. They sabotage the Instagram. They cut off the fucking Adidas contract. They did all the shit. Then they want to go get light skin yay. You gotta say it. That's Jerry. His real name is light skin yay, bro. <laughs> Dead ass, he told me that was his name. It was Light Skin Yay. They want the Light Skin version. They want a George Floyd. They want a Virgil. Then, like, they don't let me speak at his funeral. I saw two, three, four, five white people not let me speak at Virgil. None of y'all niggas. And Drake, because nigga. And, hold on, hold on. Be quiet while I'm talking, baby. Drake, I love you. I'm going to get the tattoo. But any of y'all niggas, Trav, Drake, whoever, y'all got to show up. And don't tell me I'm talking crazy. Y'all nigga, I motherfucking Pharrell and me. One. Hey. Come on, me, Pharrell, we broke down this door. We all in this shit together. We all in this shit together. And we all dealing with a lot of... We all, and what I'm telling you, a lot of people have shit to say about my Jewish comments, but ain't nobody in this motherfucking room and none of y'all entertaining niggas ever said nothing when I was praying to see my kids one of the last days. Uh, 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 uh what's my nigga that got fucking uh, locked up for the mega salad shit? Oh, Tori. Tori. Okay, look. So Tory Lanez Talk called me. Call we were saying prayers. Apple. We were yeah, saying everything. prayers on the phone together. Yeah. And I prayed that day. And y'all saw that shit. And y'all saw when I couldn't see my kids. When well, I couldn't see Chicago too. All y'all niggas on Instagram got some shit to say. Y'all niggas saw this shit. Don't tell me about my fucking political opinion. I made more money to show you that money ain't nothing. It's our money, nigga. It's our country, nigga. It's how he stole it from us. It's pyramids, nigga. It's pyramids in St. Louis, and again, Missouri. They stole it. All the shit. America, just the latest bitch that been ran through so many times. The Greeks hit her. Master Musa hit her. We had her. The Indians and shit. The motherfucking, the motherfucking pilgrims. It's the Jewish niggas. They dress the same, nigga. It's the same shit. That's the story. They put us in the school. The Rothschilds. I know Jay-Z back here like, oh, this nigga gonna die now. I've been here for a year, my nigga. They can't fucking touch me. Why? Because God covered me. He covered me. And guess what, Trump? We ain't giving you support. Let's you get Larry out. Let's you get Jeff out. You understand what I'm saying? Because y'all niggas, y'all, y'all politicians think y'all gonna just get our shit for free. Oh, all of a sudden, nigga, cause you got a mug shot, you with us now? No, nigga. No, what you gonna do for us? What they gonna do for us? Y'all niggas done voted Democrat all these motherfucking times. These y'all niggas showing with the LV show. These niggas is colonizers, nigga. The French own 80% of the banks in Africa, nigga. That's why I just met with MBS, nigga, head of Saudi. Nigga, we don't have to bow to this shit, nigga. We, okay, it's 60 million of us in America, 60 million Jews in the world. 50% of our deaths is abortion. 25% of us 
Go to prison. Raise one hand if you don't know one nigga in prison, one nigga got locked up, and one nigga poor. Wait, raise your hand if you don't know you don't know one person got abortion. Now, now I tell you, now I tell you, if we was in a Jewish mother on Friday with no fucking everybody raise their hands. So, but wait, wait, wait a second. But who got? But wait, wait, wait a second. Who make the hospitals though? Mm. Who, who got the hospitals? These are Zionists, nigga. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Jesus Christ, Hitler, yay. Third party, sponsor that, nigga. Bring your sponsorships to that. Because there's going to be some niggas that feel exactly like me. I don't give a fuck, nigga. I'm seven. I don't give a fuck about life or death. I, I get visitation with my kids. I ain't going to say so. No. Them niggas walk around like look like soccer players. They don't even fucking know. They don't even know they got the dad, the kid. They see me come play one on nobody. They still feel me. They still feel me, but they trying to program them. The head of Louis Vuitton, Bernard Arnault, fuck you. Alexander Arnault, fuck you. Francois Pino, fuck you. Dimna, fuck you. Fuck Balenciaga. Uh, fuck Cedric. Buy the easy pods. Buy the easy pods. Fuck Gap and fuck Adidas, nigga. All you niggas is like fucking still wearing Adidas. Nigga, don't say me shit. Nigga, I'm by myself in this motherfucking room, nigga. Everybody shut the fuck up. Hey, shut the fuck up. Let me tell you something right now. Just the fact that you ain't listening to me, it's it. Ain't none of y'all niggas with me. I'm by my fucking self. Cause ain't none of y'all niggas stand up for me. Ain't nobody stop. God, it's shut the the shut up. God. Be quiet before you get X out. Like yeah. next what I'm saying is nobody with me. Everybody here, half the motherfuckers on a check. Half the motherfuckers just here like ha ha, laughing at jokes, laughing at the raps and shit. Nigga, I made these beats in my mama's basement. I drew these motherfucking shoes since I was in seventh grade. Nigga, cause when I asked nigga step up, not one nigga stepped up. Not one nigga stepped up. I ain't even baby stepped up Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. None of the famous niggas, Mav Carter sold me out. You know what I'm saying? Nobody fucking said y'all saw me and see my kids. All y'all rich niggas got y'all kids in that Zionist school. Fuck Sierra Canyon. My my daughter ripped up the motherfucking couches in the house to be able to be with me right now. Y'all don't know what's going on, for real. Where y'all tick-tocking and all that shit. Y'all put up with all that shit. I don't give a fuck, nigga. I'm in Pop. I'm in Vegas. Like, Pop. My daughter had the Tupac fucking right, t-shirt. So I'm saying, witness this shit. Visit this shit. But I don't believe nobody but me, nigga. I don't give a fuck. Y'all don't gotta say we with you. You're not with me. No one's with me because no one's really with me. But it's God. just me and God. That's what I'm saying. And I'm still alive. Let's go. And he's and still alive. Let's go. You ain't post. You ain't. You ain't. You ain't post. When I couldn't see my kids, y'all ain't post. Y'all ain't stopped the Adidas shit. Y'all niggas let Adidas crash the richest nigga of all time. Y'all know I did. Adidas was begging. Wait a second. Wait a second. I put up one tweet, and then Ari Emanuel put, "Oh, we gotta drop this nigga," and all niggas just watch. The only nigga that had the Trump hat, the only nigga that went and got them billions, the only nigga that's breaking through all kinds of ideas and fashion. I've been called a faggot so many times for tight jeans. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I got, I got niggas from Chicago that I take care of that still trying to sell me. Ooh. Trying to say I can't go to motherfucking GD. Nigga, y'all been way bigger folks than you, nigga. You niggas don't take care right of me. Right now, nigga. your thing is what, who, you what's that damn thing? Who you, who you, shut up. Who, who you think? Need? No, hold on, hold on. Who you think the old man called? You. You. We put, we put Drake on, we put Drake on stage. Who the old man call? You. You know what I'm saying? Does God put you in position? Nigga, just because I had a car, nigga. Fuck everybody, nigga. You the biggest vessel. That's what I'm trying to say to you niggas yeah. right vessel. fucking now, nigga. Vessel. This is what y'all been waiting for. Drake, this is what you been waiting for. Jay-Z, this is what you been waiting for. Kim, this is what you been waiting for. All you niggas. Look, let me tell you something. This is the way the world God works. God is using him be, right now. Okay, be quiet for a second. I'll scroll for a second. <laughs> I love you, Bo. Okay. No, no, you got to get up. Hey, sorry. Come down, please. God, God yes. runs the world. Then under that, you got thousand-year-old families, Medici. Under that, you have the Vatican, the Pope. Under that, you have the financial groups that control all your shit. The Black Rock, Vanguard. Yes. After that, you have Putin. You have Trump. You have all this shit. And after that, you got what all this shit is. Entertainment. Podcast. Hollywood. Podcast. Take that. Run that back. Run in the schools. What I, I'm going to give y'all one last thing before I go. When, when, when I first put the tweet up, I was dealing with a divorce lawyer. And I explained, I explained to the lawyer what my issue was. 
And his response was to me, if you keep up this anti-Semitic rhetoric, then you won't see your kids. A nigga I knew said I couldn't have an opinion or I wouldn't see my kids. Y'all know who y'all fucking playing with? This is a vessel of God. He gonna burn all your shit down, I swear. I knew these niggas was trying to make surviving yay, surviving this way. That's why I sent it up while I was still in the high schools. Bill Cosby couldn't do shit by the time they got him. R. Kelly couldn't do shit by the time they got him. That's why I had to send it up. Because the same the niggas that made him rich is the same niggas doing the documentary. And fuck Cootie, fuck you, because everybody saw that third episode. That's what the whole shit was about. Period. Me selling opioids. I'm not even bipolar and have signs of autism from the accident. They're going to hit me with a fucking medication, have us selling opioids for them. They made me the face of bipolar. Okay, nigga, Big Pharma, where my royalties, nigga? A lot of fucking drugs you done sold off of the idea of yay being bipolar. I don't say shit right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They come here so I think, crazy I think I pretty much you still talking. Like, what are you and everything are you I'm just saying. They Shh, they yeah, take out, take out, take out, take out. Yeah, come on, yeah, yeah. yeah. sorry. Sorry, come on. Ready? I'm just saying, I was I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, come on. Nigga, take, sorry, they go. Make Jewish people should own Drake. Drake is Jewish. He's, Jewish people should own Jewish music. I don't like that Jewish people own black music. I don't like that. Let's let that be known. I want Jewish people who not a part of the culture to own the culture. Let's let that be known since we want to go viral about some shit. I want only black people to own black music. You know what I'm saying? Straight up like that. And we going to stand on that business. Yeah, and that's what we own. And, and until we fix that, I don't like it. I don't keep complaining about. It. Yeah, that's what we doing. We don't need no sponsors. We gonna keep fucking them up. Yeah, if you ain't Jewish, why the fuck you on a Jewish rapper? Music. If you don't listen to that, why you on? Why you? Nah, we not on that. We need to take the culture back. We need to own our culture. While these black people broke, we need our our music. We need to own our. Straight up like that. Yeah, straight up like that, man. And if you don't own your own shit, and you going over there and let them people own you, like Malcolm X say, you a sellout. And that's what we bring it back in 2023. Should we ain't that for every race, though. It should be that for every race. If you Jewish, you should own Jewish music. If you white, you should own white music. You should own white people should own country music. And uh, Spanish people should own and Spanish music. Yeah, everybody who from their race should own they sh straight up like that. Straight up like that. So that's not racist, that's equal. We won't And one of the issues I have mm -hmm. with the fact that we let non Africans participate in our culture so much, they can do so as a hobby because whenever they want to take off their suit they can put their white privilege suit right back on and pick up the privileges they had before they made the rap album eminem has all the privileges of a white male and the privileges of being in the hip-hop community sure. so we got to be careful That's about true. letting non-africans come into our community benefit or participate in our culture when they get to leave at the end of the night jane uh, elliott can leave at like the it. end of the night so you black like forever that. you can never take like your let me ask you a question you, you don't think eminem is one on, of the best rappers of all time according to who you, rap fan. Let me say something to you. And this is going to my African fundamentalism. No non-African can ever be the best of anything African. It is an insult to the ancestors. It is an insult to the race. And it is an insult to every black person. Do you think I could go to Palestine and be the best anything of Palestinian culture? You never see that. You think I could go to go to Israel and be the best of anything in Israel, whether it be a cook, an instrumentalist, a dancer? Hell no. And we have to stop yeah, but naming non-African people, Joe. But I did stay with me though. Let me finish this. We gotta stop naming non-African people as being the best of any aspect of our cultural project. Joe, I think you because can. it is an insult. You can. It is an insult. We can. They canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the thing came out, but he offered to suck my penis in front of all my people at my agency. What am I supposed to do? He did all of that. I'm thinking I'm the only black person on the script. I get there, it's three other black guys on there. Woo! Huh. So you wonder what they did to get it. <laughs> I told him no. What y'all do? <laughs> <laughs> and this is why when I walk in a room, heads go down. Behind my back, I'm nothing. I'm just a regular old comedian that's bitter and jealous. But in my face, no, no, no. 
The king has walked in and they have to respect it only because I've not taken the shortcuts. I've not been funded. They pay you to not talk about things they don't want you to talk about. They tell you that themselves. You guys want to do some true crime detective shit right now and match up the flight logs to the allegations? We're about to go like full on Carmen San Diego in just a second. So one of the spiciest tidbits in the first Epstein release was where they name uh, unnamed power people that are alleged to be involved, but we don't know who they are. And here's one paragraph in specific. Epstein also trafficked Jane Doe number three for purposes to many other powerful men, including numerous prominent American politicians, powerful business executives, foreign presidents, a well-known prime minister, and other world leaders. Other relevant tidbit to this dig is in one of the depositions, they're asking the, the witness, one of the victims, did you ever meet a Senator blank? There's a name taken out here. I don't know what he looks like. I might have. If I told you he was from Maine, would that stick out in your mind? So now documents have been dropping day after day after day, and there's like a couple thousand pages at this point. But in the documents that dropped today, I happened to notice that whether they meant to or not, they identified Jane Doe, Jane Doe 3 as Virginia Roberts, i.e. Virginia Guffrey. This had been speculated on already in news articles, but now it is confirmed. And you know what that means? It means we can go to the flight logs and cross-reference where we know that Virginia Roberts flew with her allegations as to who she may have met and been involved with. So just to clarify, this is speculation. This is not facts. This is just a fun game of where in the world was Virginia Roberts. Because if she's gonna make claims like this, then that means that she had to meet them places, right? And we know that they chartered commercial flights, that not all of the flights were on this flight log, but Virginia Roberts has a few specific trips on the flight log that are really obvious standouts. Most of them are back and forth between Palm Beach and the island, and Palm Beach and New York, but there's two or three where she goes international or to other places. And this is the most notable one, where they kind of fly all around the world, and we're about to follow it. This is from the 5th of March, 2001 to 11th of March, 2001. And the very first place that they flew is kind of weird. It's all the way out here on this island in the middle of nowhere where there's like nothing except a military base. And they went and hung out there for a day in Canada. Now, a lot of people have made other speculations about who this well-known prime minister might be, but I'm just gonna say that we can put this one on the list. Just, cause why not? Pure speculation. Then when they were done on their weird island, they went and spent a couple of days in Paris. Then they flew to Spain. They didn't even stay there for a full day. They landed on March 8th and they departed on March 8th. And they flew across the Strait of Gibraltar and landed there in Tangiers. Spent the night. Then they flew to London for a couple days. And then they flew back to America, but they didn't fly directly to Palm Beach or to New York. They flew to Maine. And they didn't even spend a whole day there. They landed in Maine and then they flew from Maine back home. And I can't help but wonder, why would you fly to Maine of all places when you could just as easily have flown home if you're picking up what I'm putting down there, you know? So just a reminder that we don't know if any of that's true. Even these documents that are being released are just court proceedings. It's not a trial. Nothing was proved in a court of law. Even the people that were named in the documents over a hundred times might be innocent, maybe. But the one thing that you should remember is that Epstein worked for Mossad and another three letter agency, probably. And so when you think about all the people that he had blackmail on, think of Israel. And this is what the book said. History repeats itself in 80 year blocks called saculum, but we'll just call them history blocks. Not exactly 80 years. This is history, not math, but roughly the span of a human lifetime, maybe 80 to 90 years. Within these 80 year history blocks, we have four, turnings of around 20 years each. 
We usually call them generations. This book calls them turnings. Turnings are sort of like seasons, like spring, summer, fall, winter. Throughout our history, we've had these 80-year blocks, and the 80-year blocks have been remarkably similar to each other. We're in one now. The first turning, the first season, is a high, an upbeat era. The second turning is an awakening, a passionate era. The third turning is an unraveling, a downcast era. And the fourth turning, well, sorry, but fourth turnings suck. Which one do you think the fourth right? turning is a crisis, an era of upheaval. We're in a fourth turning right now. Sure. Let's take a look at our seculum, our history block. The history block that we're in the crisis of right now. Our high began after our World War II victory. By our, we mean America's. These are America's history blocks and turnings. During a high, the getting is good. We had the most even distribution of wealth during our high, you could work at a gas station and afford to buy a house. This high is the period that the MAGA hats refer. You used to be able to buy a house for $7,500. You could work a factory job and buy a house, sustain your family, your wife would stay at home, raise your children. In a, in a scenario where, you know what the government did? They're like, hmm, maybe we make things a little bit more expensive so that the, so that the, the wife can uh, stay, uh, stay also at a job. And guess what? Guess who's going to raise the children? The system. Because if you control the future, you control the nation. So this one too. was one We got Hank history. Williams and Elvis and Little Richard and the, the birth of rock movie. and roll. We launched monkeys and men into space. This is when the Mustangs and Corvettes first came out. Our high ended with the assassination of John F. Kennedy on November 22nd, 1963. The high is not a high for everyone, of course. America still had a segregated South homosexuality was illegal and considered a mental disorder. Yeah, I would say it was just a high. I think America was only great if you were a white guy. Like, it was not, I could not have the, all the benefits of... of sure, absolutely. But, th but here's the thing. We need to take the principle because it's not just at a U.S. level, it's at a global scale. Somebody said, how do we know you're telling the truth? You don't. That's why it's up to you to make your own conclusions, do your own research, and figure it out. So you can believe monkeypox, you can go stay inside and quarantine again, or you can listen up. I pick one. Who do you think is right? The high is a period of conformity. The age of nonconformity and of social justice begins during the awakening, our passionate era. During the awakening, we had Martin Luther King and the civil rights movement, ACID, Vietnam protests and Vietnam itself, the women's liberation movement, Stonewall and the gay rights movement, great movies, great music. This is when the first Macintosh computer came out. The awakening is a time of increasing individualism. This second turning, this awakening, ended with the re-election of Ronald Reagan in 1984. Things get messy during the third turning, during the unraveling. We got the fall of Soviet communism and the beginning of the Russian gangster state. The greatest musicians of the time sang about violence and decay in their deteriorating cities. The LA riots, OJ, the bombing of Bosnia and the Columbine high school shootings on the same day. September 11th, the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. Our unraveling ended with the financial crisis of 2008. A fascinating fact about this book is that it was written during the last third turning published in 1997. But the book predicts now what's happening now in this fourth turning. And what's happening now is right on schedule. 80 years ago, in the last fourth turning, America had her Great Depression, then World War II. 80 years before that, the Civil War. 80 years before that, the Revolutionary War. Now it's our turn to save the country. So where do you fit into all this? What's your role? It depends when you were born. Each generation, each cohort, tends to embody a specific archetype. An archetype that will move the society towards the next high. Each generation's archetype is the characteristic that will define the generation in its prime, in midlife. The boomer archetype is the prophet. Bill Gates and Steve Jobs are boomers and prophets. Both predicted that one day everyone, not just big corporations and governments, would own a computer. Gates even predicted a crisis like COVID-19 five years uh -huh. beforehand. Because he runs the shit. The writers of this book are boomers and prophets. Gen X is the nomad generation. 
the quintessential Gen Xer, Elon Musk, builds things that move us from one place to another. Rockets, electric cars, hyperloops, nomadic devices. But the millennials raised during the unraveling will emerge as the hero generation during this crisis. These are the Parkland High students, the frontline hospital workers, and Malala Yousafzai. The book says millennials will be the World oh, War II heroes of our history block. We don't know what Gen Z will do, but they will be an artist generation. <laughs> From them will emerge the next Bill Withers, Toni Morrison, or Bob Dylan, all born during the last crisis, all from an artist generation. I want to be that. The history block before ours ended with World War II and began with the Civil War, 80 years prior. The history block before that ended with the Civil War and began school, the way, with the guys. end of the Revolutionary the War, 80 minds, years prior. Every 80 years or so, something big comes along and changes everything. And now we're at the end of our history block, right in the middle of our crisis. We are in the process of changing our world again. The authors of The Fourth Turning tell us that these crises are like forest fires. Unpleasant, but necessary. They clear the woods for new growth. As we work towards our next high, this crisis will tilt the playing field away from the old and towards the young, they tell us. But the victory is not guaranteed. We will, each of us, need to rise to the occasion during this crisis. We will need to develop and fortify our virtues as we pursue a greener pasture. The point is here, guys, it's very simple. We are in the fourth turning. For the sake of my mental health, I need y'all to check in with me because I can't be the only one noticing this shit, right? Why is it that in America, we have more fitness centers than anywhere in the world or any generation before us, but none of us are actually fit? We have more vitamin and supplement centers than anywhere else in the world or any generation before us, but none of us are actually healthy. They don't do that in other countries because in other countries, they get their nutrition from their food, which leads me to my next point. We pay more on a daily basis just to obtain regular food, and none of it has any healthy or nutritional properties at all. It's quite the contrary. It's actually poisoning us and making us sick where we have access to the, the, the best medical advancements and technology ever to exist, we're still a nation chock full of obese, diabetic cancer patients. We have an abundant amount of mental health resources, but we're all suffering from anxiety, depression, or insomnia, potentially all of the above. We sleep more than we ever did. We're always tired. We drink more water than ever before. We're constantly dehydrated. We work harder than we ever have. We're always fucking poor. We have insane skin regimens, but we're able in fucking dog years like I just can't fucking wrap my head around it I seriously can't never before in the history of America or in any other country have they put such a large amount of money and attention into health and beauty and not been healthy nor beautiful and why do you think that is hmm? reason that white people in the United States or anywhere we are in Europe in Africa in Australia, in Israel, wherever we are, we are the colonizers. We are the colonizers. And we live off the expense of the assault, Europe's assault on Africa, the kidnapping of African human beings, the trafficking, the, all of these things that we hear today. This is where it came from. Hundreds of years of assaulting and stealing everything that African people and Africa as a continent had and putting it into the hands of white people. And so this is why, as the chairman has said, the true class struggle, the true working class in the world is the African and colonized working class, yes. not white people, because all white people, and you know this is true, you and I know this is true, by just living our lives and seeing it, all white people sit on the pedestal on the backs of African and indigenous people. And, you know, the, the statistics are that even 
only reason. So let me make this very clear. See, when you're able to let this out like this, your life is a whole lot more better. And you're not looking for your life to be better externally because that's not where life starts at for you to be better. It starts internally. So she is at peace with herself telling the truth and walking in her truth. You see? But all the rest of you that use cognitive dissonance that are benefiting from the suffering, the genocidal acts, the scientific experiments on women, children, and men. And you look around this planet today and you are afraid that the ozone layer is being removed at such a rapid pace. The intensity of the sun has increased. The changes on the planet as far as earthquakes, uh, weather anomalies, is, has increased exponentially. Famine is starting to kick in on this planet. Famine. Viruses and diseases are next. Because of the frequency of the sun and more importantly, because you as a species collectively, individually and collectively refuse to acknowledge the fact that your lifestyle that you are living today is directly off the blood of yesterday, of women, children and men, the organic species of this planet. Every one of you is benefiting from the destruction of so-called black people. Every last one of you. And it's not just the white plate race. It's the Asian race. It's every species. And even our own brothers and sisters have adapted this mentality to capitalize off our own self-destruction. Even those that come at you and speak black power talk. You have to watch those first. Understand and overstand what your brother, what your angelic benevolent being brother is telling you. Understand what I am saying and overstand what I am saying to you, mother of humanity. Everything that we are living today is a direct, direct result of genocidal abuse. From 1619 to 1719. They have murdered over 274,000 women, children, and men on this planet. Women, children, and men. They wiped out two continents with venereal diseases alone. That is disgraceful. That was That's 1.9 million a week from Sunday to Sunday. That's how much killing and slaughtering took place and those those very genes that very bloodline is at hell bent on educating your children psychologically and medically evaluating your children policing your children having your children in their economic system having your children playing football basketball entertaining them they are hell bent on that Telling you that you would be an unfit parent if you don't bring your child to their medical facilities to get examined. When they fed your children to crocodiles. When they fed our babies to crocodiles. This is why the so-called real angelic so-called black man is upset today. I don't know nothing about these boys that's whining on here or over the internet about other bull crap. This goes back to genetics. Everything Every problem that is plaguing so-called black people from depression, anxiety to, 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 to physical health, heart disease, uh, viruses, STDs, it don't, everything goes back to genetics. And we are being poisoned by our abusers. And we have, we have accepted or we have developed what you call Stockholm Syndrome. We have separated ourselves from our own people and our abuser. To the point we turned our back on our people and we have accepted our abuser. This is wrong. And this is why right now, mother universe, father, son in the sky that says enough and is enough. We are going to separate. And in the process of them separating, the truth will be revealed. 
the truth. And then you will make the choice on what life you choose to live. Abundance and gratitude.